This is my review of the Vostok Neptune Amphibia. It's an automatic diver's watch with a rich history in engineering, and I think it's a really cool watch. So this is my review of the Vostok Amphibia Neptune watch, model number 960760. Again, this is the box that it comes in. It's a very Spartan like, plastic box. I kind of go, I already did an unboxing video about this watch. So I just, you know, I go in a little more detail about that. Very cheap, but you know, that's how it is. Again, this is what it looks like next to my Javril, which is, this is a 43 millimeter. So the first thing I'm going to say about this watch is it's, it's obviously a diver's watch. It has a bi-directional bezel, very small, like my number markings around it. It's not the biggest bezel. I have another diver's watch on me right now. It's very small bezel. Um, so the reason why I chose this watch and I, I was kind of perusing the website and, and I was actually, since they're all very, very accessible watches, the price point is, I, it was very low. I think this one was going for about 120 something euros, I'm gonna say. So after conversion, I think I ended up paying about $160 total after, you know, the conversion to, you know, to, to the dollar. And this thing took a long time to get here. I'm going to say it took over a month, which is, but you know, the shipping was free, I guess. So that's, that's cool. So yeah, getting the watch was a chore. Um, you really, there aren't really a lot of retailers to get Vostok watches in the United States as far as I know, I know of. So you kind of have to go through this uh, website. I'll post it in the uh, in the description if you're interested. So yeah, it's a it's a nice watch. the the um, The dial has some nice de detail on the like the bottom hemisphere, I guess you could say. It's got some like lines running through it. You can see through the light there, and you know it's just smooth in the front. I just thought you know I bought I chose this watch because it was uh, one of the more interesting dials that they had. Um, would I? After living it for a while, living with it for a while and using it, yeah, I mean, I, I probably would have chosen something different. For I did not notice that, you know, for anybody that wants to change your your band, um, your bracelet, or to like a, a needle strap or a leather strap or anything, um, these are not, you know, th this this kind of this is not a very compatible. You have to get some. You have to get a conversion a conversion kit in order to just wear, use a strap with these. And, you know, um, had I, I didn't realize that at the time and had I, if I did realize it, I probably would have chosen a different watch just to have that uh, versatility. Because again, you know, this is not the best bracelet on earth. I mean, the, the clasp is very cheap. Um, uh, you know, anecdotally, I saw that people would complain that these bracelets tear your hair off, you know, and it, you know, it's not, you occasionally feel a little prick on your hair. If you have a lot of hair on your on your wrist, then yeah, that might be a problem, but it's not too bad. I've experienced a little bit of that in pretty much every watch that I've worn with a bracelet. Um, there, there, you, there is always some of that. So um, again, not the best bracelet, but you know, it's okay. Uh, the back of it, you know, I'll, I'll probably give you a better view. It's got, you know, uh, like a Vostok symbol you know, I, I, the reason why I, I was intrigued with these watches is that they have a very rich history in Russian military, and it, it's a very capable dive watch. I mean, I have no, the, the amount of engineering that went into this watch to, you know, first of all, it's an automatic watch, in-house automatic. And, uh, the, you know, there's a really cool story about how they engineered these watches to meet a certain, like, uh, it's, they engineered to be, like, a very performant diver's watch and at the same time, you know, you know, be accessible to, you know, uh, pretty much anybody, pretty much anybody could afford the, these watches are very cheap. I think they range uh, Vostok, you can get a Vostok starting in the high 60 Euro, which is about, I don't know, I can't, my math, uh, about $80, 80 something dollars. So yeah, pretty much anybody could afford these watches. So yeah, I already I already talked about the I already talked about the bracelet as a critique. Yeah, it's not the nicest. The issue with this particular one, there are a lot of they Vostok does sell a lot of uh, watches with the uh, with the uh, with a better strap uh, connector 
point there. Uh, again, you can get a kit, but that's just an added expense, and I couldn't find one. I was I was going to buy one for the review, but they're out of stock everywhere that I lo I could find them. So there's that. Um, I guess one of my biggest complaints is the you know the date. Um, this thing is a pain in the butt. It doesn't have a uh, this watch does not have a uh, instant date function like where you can set the date very quickly it's also a pain in the butt to get to even get it to set the time so just adding the difficulty to gave and get to the date there first so as you can either set the time winding it is almost impossible to get right like you can hand wind this thing but it's very hard i honestly think that vostok should just eliminate the date entirely i don't think it's that important anymore uh maybe back in the day and if this is your one watch that you were wearing at all times, yeah, it's probably less of a, of a pain. Uh, the one thing you can do to to change the date is to you go to you take it a you take it to past I think it's one in the morning, and then you go back to go back. You got to go below eight 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 p.m. or and let me see if I can capture that. There it changed right there. You can see it went from two to three. So that's to, that's the quick way to change the date on this thing. Again, they you we don't need a date. Please, Vostok, if you're don't don't have a date anymore if, if it's this hard to use, honestly. Um, unless this is the one watch you're wearing every day, which I doubt. I mean, I, again, I bought this uh, just to have in my collection because I really enjoyed the story behind it. Um, the the crystal is not really a crystal. It's a it's a uh, it's a acrylic. And there's there is a reason for it to be acrylic. Uh, with the what when you're diving with this with this thing, the water pressure just pushes this the 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 crystal, and it's also I should mention it's domed. It's got a real nice dome, so it, it kind of plays with the. You know, you can see distortions, and when you look at it in the right, uh, you know, the right angle. But uh, when you're diving with this thing, the the water pressure actually pushes down. The, uh, the acrylic onto a, I believe, uh, like an O-ring, which which actually makes it seal even better. It, it, the, so the deeper you go, the, the more it seals. And I think I saw a video of uh, somebody tested one of these Vostok watches in a pressure chamber. I'll put a link of the video. And I think it made it to 800 meters before it, uh, you know, it stopped working. So, but yeah, it's a very cool, cool watch. Um, no, I, I I wouldn't necessarily say that it's. I would recommend it for day to day use. It's more like once in a while, put it on. You want something different on your wrist that you can't. Pretty much nobody has. I think it's a very interesting uh, watch in that regard. I you know setting the time is kind of a pain. Once you get used to like pulling out the crown, you have to pull it out just right, and then you get it. So it's almost like I don't know. It's almost like a puzzle. Here. You gotta pull it out, and then you kind of play with it, and then then it then it stays. Once you do it, once you get it out, it, it's it's okay. See, see, kind of like then you gotta kind of keep a little bit of uh, tension while I'm winding it. I mean, uh, getting to the right time there. Oh, and it does. I should mention there's no hacking, so I'm setting the time right now, and the seconds is going. So, no hacking on this watch and this movement. Uh, I should uh, give kudos where it's merited. The the accuracy in this thing is actually, I've noticed is very solid. Um, I don't have any equipment to measure the accuracy, but from what I've seen, I've worn it, uh, I've worn it two or three days and it's like spot on. Like it doesn't, the accuracy's there. I may have a really good one, good movement in this one. So your mileage may vary with your, uh, your accuracy, but if you're only wearing it, you know, once in a while, it's really not that important in my opinion, but it is, it, I do find it very accurate. I can, I can confirm that. So let's get some quick weights and measures on this thing and then, you know, wrap it up. So, uh, 125 grams. So not the heaviest watch. Um, you can kind of tell, I mean, this isn't a very big watch. Um, it wears very small. Um, I think it's like 39. Well, I'm going to take measurements now. So let's take a measurement here. So looking at oh, about 40 millimeters, let's tell you, we got 39-ish, here, let me see. 
about 39 and a half, so just under 40, lug to lug. So that's that's why I'm gonna show you, this is how it measured, this is why it wears so small. Got a lug to lug about 38, that's not possible. Yeah, actually, yeah. You know, it's even hard to judge where the lug is in this watch. So the lug to lug is actually smaller than the, the, the width of it, I guess because it kind of flattens out at the bottom. And there isn't a traditional like strap connector point here. So, but if you were gonna, so let's see, I'm gonna just take a measurement of this strap there. We're looking at about 20. So it does have a very standard size strap. I don't know if it would be like a 19 after you get some kind of, uh, I don't know if it would end up being a 19 millimeter after you get a, uh, a conversion kit to wear a strap, but I mean, again, I, I'm just gonna keep it on the bracelet or I might buy another Vostok with a needle with, a, with another kind of strap mechanism. Okay, so the width, so this thing is kind of thick though, I'll tell you, let me see. It's almost 15 millimeters, 14.9 th in thickness. It's a pretty thick watch. So it, it wears small, but it's very thick. So it does have presence on your wrist, even though it is does wear a little small. So as far as a watch that I'm gonna compare it to, I'm gonna, I, bro I broke out my uh, Invicta Pro Diver. Pro Diver is a superior watch. It has hacking, it has an uh, actual like a quick date set function. Uh, much better, much more refined bezel, better bracelet, better uh, better uh, clasp as well. I mean, it's not the best clasp, but it's better than this one. Um, and it's cheaper. This was sixty dollars on Amazon. It's got a. Uh, I don't. One thing to note: the, the 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 Vostok might have a slightly more accurate movement than this one in the Invicta, but I mean, you got the uh, you got the display case back. It's just. Overall, if you're looking for a, an inexpensive dive watch, Invicta is a better way to go. But you don't get the the interesting backstory and like history of the Vostok. Um, a lot of people have Invictas, not a lot of people have this watch. So uh, overall, I would give, give kudos to the to Vostok being a more interesting piece. But uh, Invicta, you know, if you just want a diver's watch, this is a better one. Uh, but this this is this is a pretty interesting watch uh, also. So you got 100 and so it weighs more, it's 145 grams versus 123 or 125 in, right now. So definitely a better watch. I would definitely choose the Invicta over this one unless you really wanted a very a kind of an interesting and different piece. But yeah, I mean, overall, I'm very happy. I'm not, I don't, I have any, I don't have regrets for buying this. I might even buy another one in the future, but overall I'm happy with it. And I'm, uh, I'm glad I have it part of, as part of my collection. If you have any questions about the watch or any, actually any of these three watches, I'm happy to answer them best, as best as I can. It really helps the channel a lot. If you, if you can like and subscribe, that would, that would be great. And I'll see you in the next one.